what is up everyone so today i'm going to show you how to build these giant ornaments uh, on a budget because we know these things get expensive and if you're interested in any of these other diy projects like this snow that's falling on me uh, definitely check out those videos and stay tuned for upgrades uh, but let's get into this diy project and see how inexpensive we can make our ornament so let's get into this diy and see what it's all about All right, so to make a jumbo ornament, uh, you could pick any size beach ball you want, any size ball, uh, kids' toys, whatever it is that you have, you could use. But the biggest um, round sphere that I could find is a beach ball at the cheapest price. So these are come usually in a two pack as low as $13. So keep that in mind when shopping around, but I've seen them up to like $20 a piece. This is a 42 inch Intex uh, beach ball here. Another thing you're gonna need is some ribbon, of course, of your choosing for the ornament to hang to make it look nice. Uh, get a wide um, ribbon, because you want it to stand out. Uh, any type of paint you want it to uh, resemble, as far as you painting it, it's gonna resemble this color. I recommend a paint and primer or at least at the very least have a primer base coat uh, because it may bleed through so this one's uh, blush pink there's gonna be other colors as well that I'm gonna use uh, maybe make stripes or something we'll see uh, eight inch tin pan um, this is from the Dollar Tree so it's a dollar but the bigger ones are better and if you could find a deeper dish it's also a better option for you um, so that way it kind of fulfills your um, the dome or the crest of your ornament of course this is going to be uh, reliant on the the size of ball you use so if you use a smaller one like say a four inch uh, ornament that you're going to make you don't want an eight inch pan right um, this may be a little too small, but this is what I found. Also, you're gonna need some E6000 uh, glue or some hot glue to adhere it. And uh, that's basically all you're gonna need. Um, also, you're gonna need a hanger. Okay, so another thing you're gonna need is a hanger of sort, or you could also get away with um, some metal, whatever it is you have that's about this gauge thickness. So if you look closely, it's about that gauge, okay? And the reason for this is you're gonna drill some holes here and make a, a loop, just like a real ornament. And then you could even use this hook shape to attach it as an actual hook, just like a real ornament. But in the, instead of having the hook, we're gonna use a ribbon, but we're gonna need this to make the eyelet on top, okay? So hangers are pretty cheap. They're usually free if you, um, buy uniforms and stuff like that and you get them serviced they come free but it's up to you depending on what you want you could use plastic whatever it is you have that's this type of material to bend. another thing that you may want to consider adding to your um, your ornament or even a bell if you decide to make it into a bell is some super 77 um, this stuff dries on clear and stuff and get the larger size because it's usually a couple bucks more it's a multi-purpose adhesive, so you can use it for fabrics and stuff you uh, may have on other DIY projects. And some glitter. So this one's uh, Craft Glitter by Hemway. I got this on Amazon. It was like, uh, I think like 10 bucks for all this glitter. So glitter is expensive, but for 10 bucks for this big old packet, that's pretty cheap. Uh, you don't need this stuff. Uh, this is just an addition to add some flair to the actual ornament or your bell to make it glisten, especially in the lights. Um, it adds something to it and it also adds texture. So it's not all smooth and stuff. Also, when you're looking at paints, um, gloss paint uh, will show um, imperfections in the materials, whatever you use it on. So that's why you want to do a primer at least. Um, but also matte finishes are a lot better for smooth surfaces so that way you don't see imperfections if there is any um, but I'll show you how to use this stuff and put it to work so one of the things you need to do is make sure you clean the beach balls with alcohol and a rag I use a shirt or a towel whatever it is you have but make sure they're clean before you apply paint 
Okay, so now we want to first drill out the holes because you don't want to glue these onto the ball and then drill into it and then flatten whatever ball you end up getting. So these hangers, they're about an eighth inch in diameter. They're actually 0.1. Uh, so you get a drill bit. And normal, normally uh, the bulbs themselves, they're really close together as far as the hoop. So you, you could either put them close or farther away. I'm gonna put them close so that way when I loop it, it creates tension just like the real deal, okay? So you could freehand this, doesn't have to be perfect. Just like so, you just puncture them. And then you clip this down to size, whatever size you decide you want it to be. So I'll start with clipping it about right in the neck area. Because remember, you could always go smaller, but it's going to be hard to go larger. And then you want to wrap this around um, a five gallon uh, pail, like a water pail, just to get a curvature first. So one way you could speed this up is drill your two holes or not, but stack them and then drill. And then you could speed up the process a lot faster. And then they always come out perfect. So what you want it to look like is something like that, okay? Of course, you can make your circles more perfect. Once you get it like that, you want to cut the extra off because you don't want it too long. Just like that. Okay. You could bend these in a little bit more and then you fish them through each one of these. Boom. And you should get something that looks like this and then you hot glue it to hold it in and so it also doesn't puncture anything, but it holds it upright like so. Okay, to make the bell uh, hoop, what I found easiest is to hold it something like this on the bend, since you have a bend right here, already on your hanger, you use that to hold it in place like so, and then you wrap it around a paint can get a double loop like that and then you cut it and then that'll be the ring for your bell and I'll show you where this will go. So this is what the ring should look like when you're done. Of course it has glue on it. Uh, you could use whatever glue you want but you're really not going to see it. It's just for the uh, ability to anchor your bell down so it doesn't fly everywhere. Okay, so when orienting your ball, in order for you to put this on top, what you wanna do is make sure the fill-in area is at the bottom because once this cap goes over, you won't be able to fill it back up or take out the air. So make sure that this one doesn't have no fill-in spout and that's where you put your cap. Okay, so I formed a generous amount of E6000 around the rim. And what you want to do is, since this is an 8 inch diameter um, pie tin, these holes or these dots here are 8 inches around the crest of each one. So that'll allow you to center it up pretty decently. So when you put it down, you want to make sure you push down on it and twist it a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch just barely to kind of embed the glue into the plastic and then you let it sit. It adheres pretty decently right off the bat. It doesn't slide but remember it's a spherical shape so no matter where you put it you should have basically it centered anywhere. Uh, but just remember these balls are uh, shaped like an orange like when you slice an orange or you peel it apart you got these sections, so it's not perfectly spherical. So that's why I chose to do it on this end. You could also leave it as is with the polka dots if you choose to do so. And you could put some lights in there too. Um, 
or at least behind it to illuminate your uh, ornament. Okay, but I think we're gonna paint these. When you decide to paint them, make sure you tape off everything you don't want painted. So we want the silver uh, more than likely, maybe even gold. And this is already gold, so we really don't have to paint this. Um, and then we want to spray uh, the first layer really thin and uh, a light color because if you spray it a dark color, anything light would have to have a tremendous amount of coats in order for that color to show. So remember your base coat should be the lightest coat so that way you don't have to deal with it. When you decide if you want to stripe this, you could use these lines as guides to put your stripes in the ornament if you choose to do so. But this one's going to become an ornament and we'll also create the bell. And then lastly, if you look close to here, I use some E6000 hot glue temporary to hold the ends, but the E6000 to hold it together. And then I put it through the little loop on the pull valve and I put a little glue there because it's large enough. Ideally, I should have put it on this side because it's smaller. Uh, but once you push down on the little valve, it holds it straight up and down, giving the illusion of having a bell. So that's the first step to creating your bells. So here's the collection of Christmas ornaments so far. What I have, what they look like, and then of course the bell with the heater heating up the glue to make sure it sticks fine. But look how large these are for a pretty cheap price. I mean, a, a ornament this size would easily run you a couple hundred bucks, which is ridiculous. So you make them yourself. As you can see with the E6000, we have some spillage only because I pushed down on it and I put an ample amount, but it's clear, it's transparent. You don't see it, which is really nice. So it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, versus the hot glue, when it dries, you can see it looks really nasty. But the E6000 around here is transparent. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's all taped off for the bell. Of course, it's really crappy, the tape job, uh, but we're running out of time, so we have to resort to quick alternative methods to get these things up. Uh, I mean, you could paint it all one color, but like you see, I ran out of paint anyway. Uh, so next year, I think we're going to be making them out of foam balls, large foam balls, and then actually spend some more time on them. But let's see what this comes out like as is. Okay, so tape it off. As you could see, you, you do small segments to get a nice round edge and make sure everything's pushed down. Uh, the issue with these is they do deflate a little bit, so the tape's a little hard to stick, but we'll paint it anyway. So as you can see, we're missing a few things. Um, we're missing uh, the actual ribbon, because originally it was supposed to be all up on the roof, just hanging, chilling out over there. And then they were supposed to hang from the sago palm, but we ran out of time. All right, and then we have our little bell ornament over here that was created with just a loop up there. It's missing the stuff, but these are all collapsible and reusable for next year. Uh, if you look closely, you could see polka dots still. Um, and that's only because we only bought one can of paint. If you redo this, or if you attempt to do this, I recommend two cans of paint per ball on a 42 inch um, diameter uh, beach ball. So keep that in mind when designing your stuff. Next year, I think we're going to do uh, foam or something along those lines, maybe even wood. Um, so that would be interesting. Okay, so stay tuned for those videos. So that's going to complete today's video on this DIY ornament. Um, I'm showing you the red one, of course, because the other ones are spread out all over the dang place. And uh, I didn't get to place them in the proper positions that I wanted to, like on the 
palm tree and stuff because I just had so many things going on. And as you can see, I'm getting rained with snow. And in the other side, there's way more snow. So uh, it's a little bit harder to get to showing all that. But I'll show you a cinematic of that stuff. So that's what it takes to complete this. I hope you like this DIY project. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.